Hi, this is Nick Caraz of Creative 111, here to talk to you today about performing witness protection on a person inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. What I have here is a clip of someone and I really wanna just blur out their face. There are a couple of effects that I could use. I could use a blur effect or I could use a mosaic. And for the purposes of this tutorial, why not use both? And there's an easy way to set this up. First of all, under effects, I'll head over to my video effects where I have several categories under the blur and sharpen category. Under that, I'll select the Gaussian blur. Once I drop this onto a clip, I'll press shift five, which is gonna bring up my effect controls and the first thing I'm gonna do is crank up the blurriness. So let's get it to a value of 30. Right now, the blur is applied to the full image, which it should be. So before I begin the mass track, I'll move my playhead to the beginning of the timeline. And then I'll select the Gaussian blur effect by its name. And right underneath it, I can see three tools for creating various type of masks or shape masks to isolate the effect to a certain part of the image. I'll select the elliptical mask tool. And I'll just use the tools here to take this circle and make it smaller so it's just covering the person's face. Now, depending on the complexity of the person's face, I can, of course, move this mask. And I can also resize it down after I've performed the track for the full duration. So now that that's set up, you can see a series of tracking tools that show up just under the mask properties. The type of track can be seen under the tracking method menu and right now it's set to position scale and rotation since i know this is a really basic track i'll set this to position and rotation and with that value set then select the play forward button from my current playhead position the tracking works so incredibly fast in the new version of premiere pro that we don't actually get to see a preview but gets the job much faster than previous versions of the application once the track is complete i can move my playhead around just to make sure that it held up nicely and I can make some changes here to the overall effect. So if I want to, I'll increase the blurriness a little bit more to 50 just to make that a bit blurry. And one of my favorites is the mask expansion button, which also works in the negative direction. So if I wanted to just make that blur a little bit smaller from the previous one that I had selected, that's how easy it is to set up. You can see here that it carries over a number of frames. Since I know I want to use this effect or this mask property just to test it out on how the mosaic is going to look, one thing I could do is actually copy the mask over to another effect. To do that, first of all, I'm going to go to the effects tab and select the mosaic effect, which I will find under the stylized category. I'll apply that to the clip here in the effect controls. I turn off my Gaussian blur so we're just staring at the mosaic. And I'll choose to change the horizontal and vertical blocks to 30 to make them a lot smaller. Selecting the mask one under the Gaussian blur. I'll just press Command C or Control C to copy it, then select the mosaic effect by its name, Command V, and you can see here that you can easily copy that mass data over to another effect. And you can see that mosaic effect on, now the Gaussian blur effect on. If I wanted to further this and make my life even easier, keep in mind that you can select any effect inside of Premiere Pro. And if you right or control click it, you can save it as a preset. If I did this before the track, what I would have is the mosaic effect set to 30 pixels on both the horizontal and vertical axis, along with just the ellipse mask untracked. Another thing to note is that both these effects exist inside of After Effects. And because of that, we have the ability to right click a clip and actually replace this with an After Effects composition. Once we do, if After Effects hasn't been opened yet, it will launch and then trigger us to save the name of a project, which I will call Send to After Effects. Now that that is saved, a new composition gets created based on the name of the actual sequence inside of Premiere Pro. And notice that not only did the effects carry over, but the masks as well. And After Effects allows the ability to do subtractive masking. So in the instance of that this mask went in front of someone and I needed to obscure it a bit more, I could do further tweaks and results right inside of After Effects. It's so incredibly cool that Premiere Pro effects that exist inside of After Effects, you can easily have them retained and continue your work there. I'm Nick from Creative 111. Stay tuned for more tips and tricks on this channel. Just simply hit that subscribe button and I'll see you around the channel sometime soon.